Lana Condor addresses plastic surgery rumors. Jay-Z reveals why he and Beyonce did not stand for the national anthem. And BB Rexta slams radio stations for inequality. Ooh, all that and more on today's Daily Hollywood Rundown. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Daily Hollywood Rundown, also known as DHR, but also it's Wednesday. I haven't done this in a while. I'm so excited. <laughs> I actually was confused. It's hump day, day which means absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. I'm a millionaire junior. <laughs> I'm Susan Morad, and I almost forgot it was hump day, so thank you for reminding mm -hmm. me. And if you need any reminders when it's hump day, you should totally hit that subscribe button right there. That way you'll know every time it's hump day, because mm -hmm. we'll tell you that. And also hit the bell to be notified a second the second we post <laughs> and leave us comments because Fridays we do you're so clever and if you've been watching us for a while you would know we highlight some of our favorite comments of the week yeah we have a lot of news to talk about today including some Brad Pitt reunion news mm. but before we get to that we're gonna get into this BB Rexa I don't want to call it drama but she is clapping back at some haters so BB Rexa is clapping back and shutting down haters after her passionate response to one of Billboard's tweets so it all started on Tuesday when Billboard tweeted out the most hot 100 entries of 2020 so far on top of the list is Eminem with 12, then comes The Baby and Mac Miller each with 10, and others on the list include Ed Sheeran, The Jonas Brothers, Juice World, Money Dag Yo, and more. But BB was quick to call out the fact that out of the 12 artists listed, there's only one woman in the mix. She replied to Billboard's tweet and said, quote, man, 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 woman, man, 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 man. She also added, quote, thank God for Camila, I'm like, yes, a female. But some fans hit back at BB and suggested that women step up their music game. Like this person who said, Maybe those guys' music are way more interesting to listen than the f***ing pop sh** y'all dropping. What? Yeah. But BB clapped back hard and shut down the haters. She posted just a few more things she had on her mind. She said, quote, Don't come to me saying women should make better music. They need to get fair playlists on streaming and radio. You have Ariana, Halsey, Dua, Demi, so many more incredible females. But she didn't stop there. She went on to say, quote, Rosalia, Taylor, Camila, Cardi, on and on and on. And BB also retweeted mentions of Selena Gomez, Normani, and Lady Gaga. She then went on to say, so many dope female artists right now. I'm excited for 2020. I was shocked by the responses. I'm not shocked by BB speaking out because she speaks out on a lot of things. And you know, some people, I would just say this, some people do get annoyed by BB because she does speak out on a lot of issues. But the thing is, you have to have people who are passionate and vocal about speaking yes. out because if you don't have somebody fighting for these issues, then things will just continue to be normal. So. Yeah, and she was definitely drawing like a conclusion from the fact that the list did have very few females. Mm -hmm. I could not believe people's comments and tweets. I was actually really disgusted. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, like so many women put their heart and soul into the music that they make. And obviously they have millions and millions of fans all over the world. Yeah. So the fact that people would just like say that, I mean, people are always a lot but stronger in a tweet than if you saw them. You know the power of radio. How many times have you, um, listen to a song at first you don't necessarily love it but then after you've heard it on the radio so many times all of a sudden so you're like oh times. I love it and that's how it goes there is so much power in who chooses what to play on the radio and these streaming services so yeah radio play it's all about that right yeah what she's saying all right so it's been a few days since the Super Bowl but we're still talking about it yeah. because other than the show and the incredible performances there's also so much other stuff that happens that kind of then develops as the week goes on exactly but what is the deal with this whole Beyonce and Jay-Z story okay so I'm I'm sure you've heard by now because a lot of people have been talking about it on both sides but Jay-Z and Beyonce were at the Super Bowl mm -hmm. and a lot of people were talking about the fact that they were seated during the national anthem. I'm not going to get into the fact that other people right around them were seated <laughs> and they weren't talking about them but people were focusing on Jay-Z and Beyonce and Jay-Z has actually finally spoken out as to why they were seated. So on Sunday Beyonce and Jay-Z attended the Super Bowl with their daughter Blue Ivy and while it always gets people very excited and talking when Queen Bee and Jay-Z are in the building their presence had people talking for other reasons because during Demi Lovato's incredible performance of the national anthem during Sunday's game, a lot of onlookers noticed that Beyonce, Jay-Z, and their daughter Blue Ivy remained seated for the entire performance. It didn't take long for pictures to start circulating, which brought a lot of headlines and mixed reactions. Many people believe that they remained seated because it was a sign of protest. However, Jay-Z has now addressed all the speculation head-on during a Q&A on Tuesday night at Columbia University. A moderator asked him whether sitting when Demi Lovato sang the national anthem was meant to convey a signal. Jay-Z responded saying, quote, it actually was <laughs> Sorry, it really wasn't. What happened was, it was not premeditated at all. He went on to say this. Jay-Z can tell you anything without speaking to me. 
and I, I need to tell you, if, I, if it was me, I would say, yes, that's what I've done. And I think people know that about me. He then went on to say, we got there and we were sitting and now the show's about to start and wife is with me. She says to me, I know this feeling right here. She's super nervous for Demi because she performed at the Super Bowl before. I haven't, which then had the audience break out in laughter. Jay-Z then talked about getting into artist mode saying, so we get there and we immediately jump into artist mode. Now I'm really just looking at the show. Did the mic start? Was it too low to start? And this makes sense because Jay-Z co-produced entertainment at this year's Super Bowl. He also added, so the whole time we're sitting there, we're talking about the performance. And then right after that, Demi Lovato comes out and we're talking about how beautiful she looked and how she sounds and what she's going through in her life for her to be on the stage. We were so proud of her. And then it finished and then my phone rang and it was like, you know you didn't. I'm like, what? <laughs> Jay-Z also said that he wouldn't do something like that with Blue Ivy there saying, Blue is right next to us. We wouldn't do that to Blue and put her in that position. I didn't have to make a silent protest. If you look at the stage and the artist that we chose, and we had a commercial running on social injustice during the Super Bowl, given the context, I didn't have to make a silent protest. I'm glad he spoke out, because a lot of people were jumping to conclusions and saying like all these different things. We're not gonna get into that, but yeah. He cleared everything up and it and makes me happy. And I love that too because what are the chances that Jay-Z would be doing a Q&A the very same week only a few days after the Super Bowl? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like him and Beyonce, it's so rare that we get sightings of them or oh, interviews. Rare. Or, oh, rare. <laughs> See what you did there. But it's not often that we would hear what they have to say mm -hmm. on a weekly basis like we do from so many other celebrities. So the yeah. fact that he did have this Q&A this week was actually great that he could address it head on. All right, but I talked at the top of the show about some Brad Pitt news. What what is this reunion that he had? Yes, so Brad Pitt, you might have noticed, wasn't at the BAFTAs mm -hmm. on the weekend. There was a speech that Margot Robbie made on his behalf that had everyone talking, yeah. but the reason why he wasn't there is actually really special. Awards season is in full swing, and Brad Pitt has received a lot of attention for his role in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. However, Brad was noticeably absent during the BAFTA Awards this past weekend specifically because he won but wasn't around to accept his award for Best Supporting Actor. Brad was reportedly all set to travel to London for the big award show when he abruptly cancelled his flight. Apparently, Maddox, who's currently studying biochemistry in South Korea, was willing to talk to his father, so Brad bowed out of the award show last minute. A source told Hollywood Life, quote, Maddox gave Brad the chance to talk and he dropped everything. While Brad was mending his relationship with his son, Margot Robbie, like I said earlier, was accepting the BAFTA award on his behalf, confirming the reason for his absence. Brad couldn't be here tonight due to family obligations, so he asked me to read his response for him. And by the way, it was quite a hilarious response. You may have noticed, but Brad's been extra cheeky this awards season. For the BAFTAs in Britain, of course, he poked fun at the royal family and all of the drama at the moment. Oh, and he says um, that he is gonna name this Harry because uh, he is really excited about bringing it back to the States with him. His words, not mine, thanks. <laughs> Luckily, Prince William and Kate Middleton didn't look too upset by that joke. Anyway, back to Maddox and his family. It's nice to see that he dropped everything to see his son, and we are so glad they are working on their relationship. <gasps> Brad, I'm so happy that Brad and Maddox are working on mm -hmm. their relationship. I know that when news came out that, well, it's been a... It's been an ongoing thing based right. on a whole, a whole bunch of things that happened a while back ago, as I'm sure you all know. Um, but it's great to know they're working on their relationship because that was something that I always felt like, you know, you just wouldn't want a parent and their child to not speak for such a long time. Yeah. So it's great to see that they're working things out. And that's the big deal that he, I mean, maybe you don't understand, but it is a big deal that he would like leave an award show because a lot of times, like, especially for a major award show, when you confirm that you're attending, like the award, whoever is, awarding, I can't talk. All the people there They're are expecting waiting. you to come. So whether you're on the red carpet, it's saying Brad Pitt's confirmed to attend, or you're in yeah. the audience, it's, it's a lot. So to drop out and, you know, get rid of that commitment, that's a big deal. And and it just goes to show that family is such an important thing mm -hmm. for Brad. Really quickly, I did, I've mentioned, Drew and I spoke about this while you were away. I got to speak to Brad Pitt at the SAG Awards. Yeah. Which still, I have washed my hand, but I didn't want to wash it because he kind of touched it as we spoke. Anyway, he did mention <laughs> in that moment that uh, we, we mentioned Australia and he said that he spent time there with his kids and they stayed in this hotel with koalas in the trees. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, family is such a big thing to him. We know that, so this is awesome. All right, as we've been discussing, the countdown is on to all the boys. P.S. I still love mm -hmm. you. We cannot wait. It comes out on the 12th. 
But during Lana Condor's really busy schedule, she's found the time to launch a YouTube channel. And in her very first video, she's addressing some speculation about whether she's had work done. Mm. As we reported yesterday to all the boys, P.S. I still love you, red carpet premiere happened on Monday night with all the film's cast and stars taking to the red carpet looking amazing. Since the night, Lana posted this cute pic of her and Noah with the caption, I really do still love you. And Noah also posted this carousel of sweet pics with the caption, we danced our ass off last night and celebrated the work we did as a family. The film will be released on Netflix on the 12th of February, so it's not long now, you guys. And amid Lana's busy schedule, as I mentioned, she actually found the time to launch a brand new YouTube channel called Lana Condor. And with the launch of her channel, she also posted her very first video title my everyday makeup tutorial. Congrats on the launch, Lana. We're so excited for you. And she's also super excited because it's something she's wanted to do for a very long time. Hi, you guys. I'm Lana Condor, and this is my freaking YouTube channel. I'm so excited, you guys. I have been wanting to make a YouTube channel for a very long time. Lana then goes on to say that her first video is dedicated to what most people request on her social media platforms, her everyday makeup look. And Lana always looks so flawless and fresh faced so we can see why everyone wants to know her beauty secrets. As Lana takes us through her everyday look, starting with her base, moving on to her eye makeup, and I might add showing us exactly how she does it, all with her really fun commentary on the way, Lana then gets to her lips and starts off by saying this. So first, I'm just gonna line them. You know, I didn't always used to line my lips, but I actually think that it makes a big difference. And while Lana was lining her lips, she actually addressed some speculation that she's actually had work done on her lips. I mean, we can't forget that her lips were specifically thanked by Noah in his speech when they won Best Kiss at the 2019 MTV Movie and TV Awards. Thanks to Lana's lips, right? <laughs> <laughs> and according to Lana, she is often asked if her lips are actually all hers and natural. And this is what she had to say about that. Also, I get a lot of questions if my lips are real or if I have fillers in my lips. My lips are indeed real. I would never touch them. I would never, you guys, you've, you heard it here first. My mom would kill me. So there you have it straight from the lips themselves. I see what you did there. Yeah. I, my lips are all natural. He's uh, got, your lips are amazing. Like just straight from God himself. <laughs> Thanks mom and dad. Yeah. Um, no, I, I didn't think that she had any work done, Neither. but if there was somebody who was wondering, I'm <laughs> glad she addressed it. Well, she said that a lot of people have asked her. If it she must had be like or... in person. Yeah, because they're like, wow, your lips are amazing. Yeah. Are they real? All right, guys, it is now time for the final, final rundown. rundown. <laughs> 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 One minute 30 on the clock, starting now. Megan Trainer is speaking out against Niall Horn. Well, not really. Let me explain. So Megan Trainer just recently revealed that she was upset with Niall Horn after he released his song "Nice to Meet You." If you don't know, Megan just recently dropped her third studio album and is promoting her new single "Nice to Meet You" featuring Nicki Minaj. But that song is the exact same title as Niall Horn's song. She said when she saw it, she was quote pissed because I wrote mine years ago and that happened and it's down to the same spelling of yeah. And I was like, oh no, what do we do? Do we change it? Do we say something else? And there truly couldn't have been another title and I'm sorry. Niall's really nice, I love him. Every time I see him, he's amazing to me, but I can't change it and his fans are coming after me and it's okay because my fans are standing strong. But she said Niall's fans were cruel saying, they're just like, I thought this was trending for Niall because it was trending, guess not, dot, 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 ew. And I was like, mm, at least you're still trending it, ew. <laughs> She's so cute. So cute, so cute. Moving on to our next story, the final list of presenters for the Oscars has been revealed. The Oscars are kicking off this Sunday and make sure you stay tuned to Clever News for all of our Oscars coverage. And today, the final few celebs who will be taking the stage this Sunday were announced completing the list of presenters for the show, which includes Tom Hanks, Sandra O, oh, Natalie Portman, and Chris Rock were just announced. Oh, I cannot wait for the Oscars. It's the end of awards season. Yeah. It's been like, it's been every week we've had a show, a show, and now it's actually coming to an end. It's coming to an end, but um, you know, we can use the break for a little bit. Yeah. Let's get back to like the regular entertainment Re news. Regular scheduled programming, yeah. yeah. But of course, once, uh, you know, Billboard Awards and all that stuff, yeah. there's more it stuff never coming. Ends. It never ends. And we like that. <laughs> all right, you guys, that is it for today's episode of the Daily Hollywood Rundown. We'll be back here tomorrow, mm -hmm. so make sure you won't miss us too much but before you go anywhere I really want to know this Lana Condor story got me yeah. thinking about what other celebrities 
do I wish or do you guys wish also would start a YouTube channel? Because I feel like it's it's a thing now. Before, you know, maybe five years ago we weren't seeing as many big celebrities right. starting channels, but now we're seeing more and more, like literally every month. I'll tell you mine. Oh yeah, right? that's a good one. Oh. Oh, Ooh. I think that will we'll tell you ours tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but also, I want to know what you think about Jay-Z speaking out and responding to all the critics who were saying, you know, you heard the story. So <laughs> let us know in the comment section below and we'll be back here tomorrow. Bye guys. But wait, before you go, I know you want to get into, you know, leaving your comments and stuff, but also click that subscribe button right over here. Oh yeah, right over here. And while you're over here, you might as well click right up here because yesterday's DHR is here and it's a really good one. It really is.